There are planets where it rains glass, acid, molten iron, and diamonds. You're gonna need a tougher umbrella there. A day on Venus is longer than a year. It takes the planet 243 Earth days to rotate around itself, and only 225 days to make a full circle around the Sun. Space isn't entirely cold. It can get scorching hot when in direct starlight. The movement of galaxies and clusters billions of light years away from us suggests there's some enormously massive body outside the visible universe. After billions of years, the expansion of the universe will make the space so sparse that we won't be able to see the stars in the sky at all. Astronomers can predict asteroids going towards the Earth, but only to a degree, and only when they're close enough. In about 4 billion years' time, the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies will collide, but we'll probably not even notice it. About 5 million years ago, the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy launched a star from itself, and it's now traveling through the Milky Way 10 times faster than any other star out there. There are planets that aren't bound to any star orbit and aimlessly wander through outer space. Some stars out there take the energy of other stars to burn for longer. Neutron stars are some of the smallest, yet the most massive objects in space. They're usually about 12 miles in diameter, but are several times heavier than the Sun. Oh, and they also spin about 600 times per second. Cold welding is a phenomenon in space, when two pieces of the same metal join together without any trouble in heat. About 700 million years ago, I wasn't around then, a mysterious event that occurred may have turned Venus into the place it is now. Admittedly, astronomers can't see the surface of the planet directly because it's covered with dense layers of thick clouds. But space missions that have been sent to the hot planet found that Venus is peppered with fire-breathing volcanoes, massive mountains, countless craters, and gigantic lava plains. The temperatures on the planet are so incredibly high that they could melt lead, and the atmospheric pressure is so immense that it would instantly crush any living being reckless enough to set foot on it. If that's not enough, the atmosphere of the planet is filled with noxious clouds of sulfuric acid, which smells worse than rotten eggs. Carbon dioxide, the main component of Venus's atmosphere, along with the infamous sulfuric acid, creates a powerful greenhouse effect. As a result, the lower atmosphere and the surface of the planet are some of the hottest places in the whole solar system. But the newest scientific theory claims that Venus could have had a pleasant, stable climate for billions of years before something went wrong. Astronomers did thorough research and built a model of a virtualized Venus-like world. This model demonstrated that for most of its history, the hot planet had oceans with liquid water adequate temperatures, and stable tectonic plates. In fact, the planet resembled Earth as it used to be at the beginning of its life. Scientists suppose that this period of Earth-like development could have lasted for more than 3 billion years. So during that time, the planet was most likely covered with oceans, which were from 30 to 1,000 feet deep. Also, some water was locked in the soil of the planet. On top of that, Venus had stable temperatures of 68 to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, which, you have to admit it, were quite pleasant, and not that different from the temperatures on Earth nowadays. So what I'm getting at is that for 3 billion years, right until something irrevocable happened 700 million years ago, Venus could have been habitable. Saturn's rings are very thin compared to its size. If you had a scale model of the planet that was 3 feet wide, the rings would be 10,000 times thinner than a razor blade. Mercury is a few billion years old. In 2016, scientists discovered some abnormalities on the planet's surface, showing that it's getting smaller. After more research, they found out that Mercury hasn't finished cooling down yet. Even though Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system, it still has snow, but it's not what you expect. It snows metals and rains acid. Not a great vacation spot. A day on Uranus lasts 17 hours, 14 minutes, and 24 seconds. But get this, 
the planet has a tilt of around 98 degrees, and that makes a season on the gas giant last 21 Earth years. Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. In the next 30 to 50 million years, Mars' gravitational forces will tear Phobos apart, and it will likely result in the formation of a ring around the planet. Earth We've reached our home planet, the densest in the solar system. At the Earth's center, there's a core that takes up 15% of the planet's volume. It consists of two parts, the outer and the inner core. The inner core is a solid ball made of iron and nickel. Its radius is 760 miles, give or take, which makes 20% of the entire Earth's radius and 80% of the Moon's radius. The 1,500-mile thick outer core is liquid. It also consists of iron and nickel, but it's not under enough pressure to be solid. The temperature at the boundary of our planet's inner and outer core is 10,800 degrees. That's as hot as the surface of the Sun. And the pressure there is three and a third million times the atmospheric pressure at sea level. The mantle surrounds the outer core. This layer is about 1,800 miles thick and makes nearly 84% of the entire Earth's volume. It consists of silicate rocks rich in iron and magnesium. The crust is a relatively thin layer that takes up only 1% of the Earth's volume. Hey, I like thin crust. Along with the upper part of the mantle, it's broken into tectonic plates. They move as fast as your fingernails grow and let heat escape from the Earth's interior. The crust is mostly made up of oxygen, silicon, aluminum, iron, and other minerals. Mars. But it's time we leave our planet behind and move to the red planet. It's the last of the inner planets, which are also called terrestrial since they're made up of rock and minerals. Mars has a core made mostly of iron, nickel, and sulfur. It's between 900 and 1200 miles across. The core doesn't move. That's why Mars lacks a planet-wide magnetic field. The weak magnetic field it has is just 0.01% of the Earth's. The mantle surrounding the core is composed of thick silicates, oxygen, and some other minerals. You can probably compare it with soft, rocky toothpaste. Yeah, brush your teeth with that. The Mars mantle is also much thinner than the Earth's. It's just 800 to 1100 miles thick. The planet's thin crust consists of volcanic basalt rock. Astronomers believe it isn't broken into tectonic plates and remains in one piece. The crust is covered with fine reddish dust that looks like talcum powder. I like my crust covered with tomato sauce and cheese. Saturn Welcome to the planet with the winds that travel at more than 1,100 miles per hour at the equator. It's also the planet with the big rings. Saturn is mostly composed of hydrogen and helium, with some traces of methane, ammonia, and water. But it contains more sulfur than Jupiter, which gives the planet a smog-like orange hue. The atmosphere of Saturn isn't really different from its surface. But the deeper you go, the higher the pressure becomes, and hydrogen becomes liquid. Further to the center of the planet, this liquefied gas turns into metallic hydrogen. Like Jupiter, Saturn might have a rocky core with hydrogen and helium surrounding it. On the other hand, even if it's made up of rocky material, the core can still be liquid. Saturn is the least dense planet in the solar system. It has one-eighth the average Earth's density. The planet is 95 times more massive than Earth. Uranus Look at this blue-green planet on our way. It's one of the two ice giants in our solar system. It's composed of more ice than gas. At the very center of Uranus, there is a rocky core, small, just half the Earth's mass. Compared to other planets, Uranus's core is rather cool, only 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. An ice mantle surrounds the solid core, and that's the largest portion of the planet, about 80%. It's also not the ice you might be thinking about. It's a hot, dense fluid made up of water, ammonia ice, and methane, sometimes referred to as a water-ammonia ocean. Uranus's atmosphere is mostly hydrogen and helium, but it has its blue-green color because of methane gas that absorbs the red light. Neptune That's the final stop of our unusual journey and the second of the two outer planets known as ice giants. 
It's also the windiest place in the solar system. Clouds of frozen methane are whipped across the planet at a speed of 1,200 miles per hour. Neptune's core is solid and consists mostly of iron and some other metals. Its mass is 1.2 times bigger than that of Earth. The temperature inside reaches 9,000 degrees. Astronomers also believe that at a depth of 4,500 miles, there might be a diamond layer where it's raining diamond crystals. Over the planet's core, there's a large mantle, a superheated region of liquid, with the temperatures getting as high as 3,000 to 8,500 degrees, give or take. The mantle is rich in methane, ammonia, and water, and equals up to 15 times Earth's mass. Neptune's atmosphere forms 5 to 10 percent of the planet's mass and stretches 20 percent of the way down to its core. It consists of 80 percent hydrogen, 19 percent helium, and a bit of methane gas. Just like with Uranus, the methane gas is what gives the planet its bluish hue and its stinky pew. Astronomers know for sure that the universe is growing bigger, and the speed at which it's ballooning is increasing all the time. But if the whole thing is swelling into something bigger, then it must have some kind of an edge, right? It's unlikely that people will ever find out. But if so, then what would it be? A ginormous brick wall and then nothing? An abyss that leads to nowhere? The most common theory is that the universe is shaped in such a way that it can't have an edge. But it's not the only idea. Another theory is even more difficult to comprehend. The universe is indeed infinite. And our part of it isn't that unique. It means that somewhere out there, there's another you. Or rather, other you. One of them is just a bit shorter, another wears their hair in different ways, and a third one is identical to you in all possible ways. Hey, good looking! Oh yeah, there's also a theory about a multi-universe that consists of many smaller universes. And the universe we live in is just a tiny bubble among other similar bubbles. Those scientists who support this idea are also sure that bubble universes can come into contact with one another. Then gravity starts to flow between them, and when two or three universes connect, a big bang occurs, just like the one that created our home universe. Everything on Earth and everything people have managed to see in space with the help of telescopes and other instruments is normal matter. It's made up of atoms and molecules and adds up to less than 5% of the universe. Almost three-quarters of the universe is dark energy. Astronomers wouldn't even know the thing existed if several decades ago they hadn't found out that the expansion of the universe wasn't slowing down. Quite the opposite, it was accelerating. It meant there had to be some enigmatic force that counteracted gravity. It got dubbed dark energy. Our Sun is insanely massive. Want proof? 99.86% of all the mass in the solar system is the mass of the Sun, in particular the hydrogen and helium it's made of. The remaining 0.14% is mostly the mass of the solar system's eight planets. The Sun's atmosphere is hotter than the surface of the star. The surface temperature reaches 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, but the upper atmosphere heats up to millions of degrees. Venus is a champ when it comes to volcanoes. The planet has about 1,600 major ones, but none of them is known to erupt. The ocean on Jupiter is larger than any other in the solar system. But unlike Earth's oceans, it's made not of water, but of metallic hydrogen. The ocean's depth is a mind-blowing 25,000 miles that's almost the same as the distance around Earth. With an average diameter of 2,160 miles, the Moon is the fifth largest satellite in the solar system after Jupiter's satellites Ganymede, Callisto, and Io, and Saturn's Titan. There's a supermassive black hole 250 million light years away from us. It hums the deepest sound ever detected from any object in the universe. It's 57 octaves lower than the middle C on your piano. That's one quadrillion, which is one with 15 zeros, times deeper than what we can hear. 
the Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy are going to meet in 3.75 billion years. They're moving towards each other at a breakneck speed. When the two galaxies collide, they'll form a huge elliptical galaxy. I won't be around then. Mercury is a few billion years old. In 2016, scientists discover some abnormalities on the planet's surface, showing that it's getting smaller. After more research, they found out that Mercury hadn't finished cooling down yet. Astronauts in space can lose about 1% of their muscle mass each month. To prevent this, they have to stick to an exercise regimen that lasts 2 hours every single day.